Hi, I'm Mike Van Pelt. This is Renee Van Pelt. Welcome to Global Expedition Vehicles. This video is sponsored by Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering awesome boxes of top the shelf goods for under the radar brands. To get 20% off your first box, click the link in the description and enter code FLORB20 at checkout or go to bespokepost.com forward slash FLORB20. And remember to subscribe. We didn't start in an expedition truck. I mean, we had a brand new RV and we took it to Alaska and it just wasn't the type of construction that we wanted. Mike comes from the commercial construction world. So he's like, hey, let's just build this ourselves. The first truck that I bought was a 2004 Unimog. I bought that new and then started building pretty much immediately. We were able to make some travel to South America. Lived in it and traveled down there for a little over a year, put 57,000 miles on the truck. A couple months into the trip, we looked at each other and said, we don't see any Americans. Why don't we see Americans? It's like, we don't really have vehicles that really can do this type of stuff. And next thing you know, we were building a couple trucks as soon as we got back into the United States. We knew the chassis could do stuff. We had to build a body that was as robust, that could also handle mostly the rough terrain and, and the, the harsh climates. We do use sandwich composite panels. There's not many manufacturers in the US that use that technology. We build everything we need right here in house. 15 years ago or 16 years ago in that first build versus now, aesthetically, maybe things are a lot different but we're still using the same high quality marine refrigerators, marine wiring, sealed components. The things that have really changed are the electronics. The heart of the system is, is the electrical and the batteries and that's been a real big game changer for us. This is our latest and greatest, biggest and best. This truck is an extreme Kenworth K370 off-road expedition vehicle. Has a Cummins engine in it, has an Allison transmission. This one happens to have a 3500 transmission RDS. This particular vehicle has every bell and whistle that we can put on them, including the FLIR for looking infrared. Off-road lighting is extreme on this vehicle. It has front and rear winches, 200 gallons of fuel on it. It has the military tire and wheel package, it has central tire inflation through the axle, full spring suspension, as well as independent suspension. So the wheels can go up and down on their own, up to 14 inches of total wheel travel. The cool thing back here is this truck has four wheel steering, including four wheel crab. So you can go at an angle or you can just decrease your turn radius. Most Average pickup trucks have a turn radius around 49 and a half feet. This one has a turn radius of 30 feet, five inches, even though the overall length of it is 32 feet long. It has a locking rear differential and front differential and center differential. So when you're in a really precarious situation, all four wheels are turning with the same amount of power. This is a 60 Hertz 240 volt generator. It's auto starts, so whenever the batteries are low, it automatically starts. And it's got 1.2 kilowatts of solar electricity on the roof. This area is your storage area, but also shares it with the electrical and plumbing features of the truck. We have two inverted chargers. One inverted charger is for your 240 volt, the other is for your 120 volt. Two lithium ion batteries. Each battery is 440 amp hours at 12 volt. Here you have a solar charge controller that brings your solar down into the batteries to charge them. And you get pretty good charge no matter what time of the day it is. All of our uh, doors are integral and they are set back 30 millimeter behind and 30 millimeter back. And all of our doors have extra security features. This truck has 28 gallons, both black and gray. It's a marine toilet. It's at, got a macerator pump in the toilet, which grinds up everything, puts it back into the tank on the other side under force. Both tanks are heated. Electronic dump valve, both inside as well as in here. And when you're done dumping the black tank, you can push a button in the dash or out here that will take all the gray water and put it in the black tank to clean and wash it out before you continue to dump it. 
Here you have your forward looking infrared and as you can see it's a monitor that's uh, in dim light shows up heat signatures of a person walking. And that's the quickest and easiest way to see what you're dealing with. It also sets out a signal, a sound. This is central tire inflation system so you can preset all of your tires or you can program it yourself. It comes with presettings but you can program it yourself. This is the nav system that we're using on this truck. Compass on it, XM radio. You have three exterior cameras that will show up on this monitor. As you can see, this monitor is quite a bit larger monitor than what's normally in a vehicle. And it's easy to, to see. When the table is being stored there, you have a little bit less room, but these are electronic seats where they will make out into a bed. When people are back here, they can easily talk to the people up front. You have one air conditioner unit that's up here and another air conditioner unit that's in the rear. The blinds and screens, they will totally block all of the light out and they're double pane glass. They get very little UV and uh, any type of heat inside. We have heated floor in this one. All the, the cabinets are the standard latching mechanisms. Here you have a television. It can open and be caught in various places. So that makes it quite nice. Here in the galley, you have a dual burner induction Gaginaw stove, very high-end stove. Your freezer and refrigerator, self-latching doors, which are quite nice, all stainless steel drawers. So when you open it up, your stuff doesn't fall out on you. You have your normal sink. You also have hot and cold water, but you also have filtered water here also. Uh, standard cabinetry, you have your washer and dryer here. This is a speed oven. You have some controls here, so you can basically control everything there. Generator controls, your heater control, and your water heater timer. And then you have breakers for anything that you need. We're not done with labeling yet. This is the bathroom. We have a separate shower in this one. Macerator toilet, vacuum flush. It pulls everything and takes it to the back. Allows the bathroom to be dry. I think this is one of the classier bathrooms that you'll see. It also has a skylight in it. In this truck, there's actually three skylights, one at the bedroom, one at the dining area, and one in the shower area. Back here in the bedroom, you have three drawers here, closets on both sides, drawers for his and her things on each side of that. Behind where the lighting is, there's also reading lights as well as uh, uh, device chargers, etc. back there. This is our adventure truck. This is built on F750 Ford chassis. The F750 is a single cab. What we have up here is an off-road bumper, winch, brush guard, and a whole lot of off-road lights. These are not the standard F750 tire and wheels. We've upgraded them to G278, which is a 385 tire. We've got them on single part wheels and we have a semi-automatic tire inflation system, which will let us adjust the tire pressure from inside the vehicle, both up and down, which is great traveling on gravel roads. Because we have an extra large chassis, we have another set of storage boxes underneath. These are the aluminum storage boxes that are added. These are integrated into the body. So this is part of the standard adventure truck. We have five of these storage boxes as we go around the truck. Both the Adventure Truck and the Adventure XT are molded fiberglass construction bodies. That lets us have consistency in the size, which lends itself to a production style body. This is a standard location for the tire for the Adventure Truck series. This one has been upgraded with an electric winch. We also have a hitch receiver with a two-up bicycle rack. The bumper itself is adjustable. So this bumper is right now in the off-road driving position but it can be lowered for highway driving. And attached to that, we also have a set of extraction mats. This adventure truck is loaded with a lot of other options like security camera systems, backup camera systems, but let's go inside and look at what's in there. This is the cab access to the F750. It would be the same for a 550, but we've replaced the standard Ford seats with air ride leather seats with heat and cool. We've got a really nice nav system. And then this is our cab access space that has a pull down blind for privacy, but we can also install a shipping plate for security. 
What we have here is a front dining booth space with two individual tables on swivels. This can also be made into sleeping for one extra person. The kitchen in our adventure trucks is a door refrigerator with a single burner induction cooktop, the microwave, and of course you have the biological water filter system also. We are carrying 90 gallons of water on board. We don't use any propane, no gas. So this particular truck has 800 amp hours of lithium battery, a 3000 watt master volt inverter. It also has 600 watts of solar on the roof. So we're well equipped to stay out for a long period of time. This adventure truck has been upgraded with a set of dual pane glass windows with integrated blind and screen systems, which will just give our truck more insulation and also better soundproofing. The air conditioner is a 12 volt air conditioner from Cruise and Comfort, more energy efficient than the 110 air conditioners, but we can run without uh, starting the truck engine or needing a generator, we're running straight off of our lithium battery bank. Underneath the bed, we have a cabinet that's 20 inches deep right here. And then right beside the door, we have a floor to ceiling cabinet that's got hanging in the top and shelves in the bottom. Going into the bathroom, you're gonna see a very luxurious bathroom. Nice size, great countertop space, and a huge linen cabinet inside. We're also utilizing the Thetford cassette toilet systems. This is a Mercedes Unimog. This happens to be a Pangea model. Pangea is when it starts out small and gets a little bigger. So the roof goes up. It has portal axles, which is a gear reduction drive off of the axle, lowering down. It's really a good vehicle, primarily outside the United States because of the lack of serviceability in the United States, but it is a really wonderful vehicle. This truck is utilized in Europe as essentially a tractor. So there's a lot of things that can be done with this vehicle that can't be done with any other vehicle. The hydraulic system will allow you to power winches. Normally, we would have a power takeoff right here. We choose to take it out because it's quite heavy and we haven't a need for it, so we remove it. But it allows us to have a hydraulic powered winch on the front as well as in the rear. If you want to have a hydraulic impact wrench or even a hydraulic chainsaw, you can utilize those types of hydraulic features for it. Standard toilet, full spring suspension. This truck happens to have 125 gallons of, of uh, bottled water and you have a filtration system to be able to get your drinking water out of it as it is. Uh, we have two shore power connectors on this vehicle. You have a 50 Hertz and a 60 Hertz power. The electrical system size is the same. It's got two 440 uh, amp hour lithium batteries, and then it has an inverter that converts your power for the things like your air conditioning or your convection cooktop. The spare tire carrier allows the spare tire to come down electrically and safely. Uh, this vehicle does not have a motorcycle carrier on it. It's not a good way to put one on it. It does have a place to be able to put bicycles on it, however. We also have extraction mats here if you're in a situation where you're stuck and you need to be able to have some assistance getting out, that's the fastest way to get that assistance. In the Pangeas, sometimes uh, we will recess the awning in it if a person needs it that way, and this happened to be that it did. So this vehicle is one of the coolest vehicles on the planet, in my opinion. You can have it in automatic or you can put it in manual mode. The coolest feature at all about it is you can pop this little panel off and you can move the steering wheel to that side for in areas that need to be a right hand steer vehicle. Your foot pedals, everything moves. So it's totally like it would be if it was designed to be a right hand drive vehicle. Because of where some of the electronics and electrical devices are, it prohibits the size of the opening from the front to the back, but it suffices for the need. This happens to be a pantry. This has cam latches, which allows us to uh, lock and then suck them in. This below here happened to be for a guy's coffee brewer here. Microwave, which microwaves and convex. These are your controls. This is the controller for the, to raise and lower the roof. Generator control, heater control, air conditioning control, and then what's called the easy view or the touch five. 
allows you to monitor your tank levels as well as fuel levels from uh, the auxiliary tank as well as uh, your charging position on the on the battery so we did a stainless steel countertop in the bathroom as well as the kitchen it has a cassette toilet and a window in the bathroom which is nice gives you ample room to be able to shower and do the things that you need to do so here you have your freezer and your refrigerator and you can usually turn the temperature of the refrigerator down enough to where you can freeze things both in both units double induction Burner. Uh, you have your television here, the sound bar that works with that television. Your filtered water for drinking and then your water that you'd normally use for washing, cleaning, and, and cooking. Your dining table here, you can easily sit six to seven people here. This makes out no bed, so you can sleep two people here and two up there. We don't believe really in the um, description that people have developed in the United States for overlanding. Overlanding for most of the world is enjoying other cultures. It's immersing yourself in those cultures. It's stopping and talking to those people, giving, you know, giving someone a drink or helping someone get unstuck or just enjoying a, a visit with people. When you get too tied up in the details of a truck, you're missing the whole point of the trip. You're missing the whole point of the reason for the truck. We're good at what we do. We're a lot better at what we do when people allow us to do what we know to do and let us do the worrying about things and them do the preparations and things that they need to do to be able to go on the trip that, that, that'll make the memories that they're really ultimately wanting to have. There's always compromises and I think it's more important that you actually get a plan, get some kind of travel vehicle, and get out there and travel. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering awesome boxes of top-the-shelf goods from under-the-radar brands. Each box has around $70 in value, but you only pay a fraction of that price. And it's great because you only pay for what you want. You get a box assigned to you each month based on the quiz that you take when signing up. And before it's shipped to you, you get a preview of what comes inside. So if you decide that you like it, you can keep it, or you can swap it for a different box on offer, or you can skip the month entirely for absolutely no charge. You only pay for what you want. Plus, the box lineup changes every single month. As a small business owner myself, I am a big fan of supporting small businesses, and that is one of the things that I really like about Bespoke Post. 90% of the products in Bespoke Post boxes come from small businesses, many of which are based right here in the United States of America. And if you're like me, then you enjoy getting packages and opening them up. Anytime I get packages in the mail, it always feels like a mini holiday. I mean, who doesn't like opening a package and getting a hatchet in the mail and then going out into the woods and chopping some wood or getting a new bag and taking it out and seeing how it feels out in the field. I think Bespoke Post is a fun service and if you're like me then I think you'll really enjoy what they have to offer. So to get 20% off your first box click the link in the description and enter code FLORB20 at checkout or go to bespokepost.com forward slash FLORB20. Thank you for watching. Have a great week.